Instant lawn is appealing. Some of us call it sod. There's lots to know about it. Tune into this video and learn everything there is to know about sod and instant lawn. Hi, I'm John Valentino, president of John and Bob's Corporation. I'm a landscape architect and a landscape contractor and a general engineering contractor. I'm here with Chip Valentino and he's uh, overseeing our uh, sod installation, which we did on a very hot day. We're here at a garden that was 106 the day we installed the sod, which is really hotter than you would want to do it. And this is an interesting garden, lots going on at it. Uh, we've probably got another three or four weeks before we're done completely. But there's, right behind me is a big expanse of lawn, which a lot of it is taking up an area for future garden developments. Um, but right now, it's a simple, easy way to put it in sod. We'll talk about how we did the installation and how the maintenance is going uh, to occur in our order to help you in your own garden. So this expanse right next to me of sod is 5,500 square feet. Then there's another uh, piece in the other part of the yard that's about 1,000 feet. We're taking it a little out of order because we're starting with the most critical part of laying sod, which is as soon as you lay it, you water it, and you water it more than you really think it needs the first uh, couple of days. So we entitled this point Water, 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 and that's because that's the most important thing to make sure we have success, especially on a day like we laid it when it was 106. If you envision what went into this, we have this sod and you can see it's just starting to try to root, but it was just all its roots were cut off and it was shipped in our case about 100 miles. And so if you cut off all the roots, roll it up, ship it 100 miles, that's quite a shock. And one of the most important ways to mitigate that shock is with water and moisture. So as soon as we lay it, we don't want to let it sit around on the pallets. We want to lay it uh, and then start watering it like crazy. So the process of laying the sod is really just hard work uh, where you uh, butt up the joints as closely as you can and stagger them so that you don't have big lines of joints because as you look at this you'll see where it fails most often or you get a little bit of drying and browning is at the joints. Uh, we want it to be flat. Some people like to roll it. I think that's usually overemphasized. Uh, sometimes we use a roller if we think it's going to do something. The whole idea of the roller is to get out air pockets, but you can do that if you do a good job of laying the sod. So you lay it firmly, butt it up against the joints, and uh, move on to the next roll and stagger the joints. That's really all uh, the process of laying involves. To get the uh, area ready to plant sod is very similar to getting it ready to plant seed. And uh, you might have noticed, if you're one like me that looks at lawn everywhere, if you ever go to like a big athletic field or something and you see stripes of green amidst a sea of chlorotic looking kind of brown lawn, mostly that is where trenches have been dug. So the trenching goes to 12 to 18 inches and there the soil is is ripped and tilled very thoroughly and then many times installers won't do a good job on the rest of the area and will just level it off and leave a compacted hard compactive soil that does not have a good exchange of air and water and you you can the d difference is dramatic and that can teach us that it's important on lawn even though as you look at organic gardening uh, in general, you're not going to do tilling time and again in a year. Tilling still has its place or ripping or some kind of working the soil to relieve compaction, relieve hard soil, and it's especially important in lawns. On a lawn like this, um, we would normally till and to try to till to as deep as the tiller will work. You can see here where we're using our Barreto tiller to um, get down pretty deeply. You, you can get down eight inches easily and maybe even a little more. The other time when it's not as important is if there's a lot of fill. And on this uh, yard we had a lot of fill. 
So there are parts of it we tilled and parts of it we didn't till, but that's a real important factor is do a good job of ripping up that soil, relieving compaction, and then it is ready for the next step of soil preparation. So on this lawn, we added a blend uh, at a heavy rate. We like to use uh, about 20 to 25 pounds per thousand. What we're trying to do is make this a lively soil underneath this new sod. That's really the key to this sod not getting fungus. That's the key to it rooting quickly and uh, growing and thriving. So we just scattered that on top of the soil and then do a fine tuning on the raking. Um, if you've made compost and want to use that, then I would till that in. Once you do that, then you can lay the sod. Then I like to right over the top of the sod before you start watering, spray a penetrate liquid biotiller and then water, water, water. If you're interested in trying out blend and penetrate for your sod or lawn needs, uh, go to our website. There's a link to our website in the description below. One of the real advantages of sod is it's great for patching. If you have weak spots or dead spots, sod instantly gives you a healthy, thriving lawn in a spot where that's been an issue. The problem is that, as we've talked about already, the importance of moisture, it's hard to keep patches moist enough to, for them to root. And so you need to be selective about when you use sod uh, for patching. But in terms of an instant solution, way easier than seeding, which is difficult. Either way, if you do seeding for patching or sodding for patching, you need to figure out a way to keep the seed moist or the sod moist. In sod, that's relatively easy to do in like the western part of the United States uh, where we are. Uh, if you do that patching in October or November, December, January, February, right in there is a good time to patch with sod because it's not as difficult uh, to keep the sod moist and it'll root well. But if you try to patch in the summer, it's almost impossible, especially if you have an existing lawn that you don't want to, you only want to water a certain amount, but you have to water these patches. So you almost have to water the whole lawn and that's usually a problem that can cause other problems. So patching with sod is uh, my preferred method, but we do it in a cool time of the uh, year where uh, it'll root without a lot of supplemental water. Let us know in the comments if you have any concerns or questions about planting sod or seed. We'll help you out. So you can see right now uh, is one of the watering cycles. Right now this is watering uh, four times a day. In this case with MP rotators on 23 minutes. So that's quite a bit of water. That's uh, about nine to over 90 minutes of water a day with the MP rotators, which deliver water at a very slow rate. You can see they have these patterns of water. So the key here is a really mindful uh, water management. So you're, the first few days you're making sure you water, you overwater, and then you kind of even that out a little bit, and, and then you start to water less, I'd say, after the first week. What you want to do, what I would prefer, is to uh, mow this after two weeks, after it's been installed two weeks. In order to mow it, you need to be able to walk on it without causing any damage to the grade and without causing any marks. And that's really the reason why you don't want to walk on new uh, sod, uh, new instant lawn. It's not because the grass won't take it. You could walk all over it, but it's because we have it so wet underneath that you cause damage to the grade and you cause irregularities and you cause divots and holes. So you want to stay off of it just from a grade standpoint and let that lawn root. And then you slowly uh, dry it out and you get to a point where you get it nice and firm for that first mowing about two weeks from uh, the date you installed it. And then we resume watering, but not the same as before where we were at four times a day. We'd probably go to once a day after the first mowing and total minutes will dial back quite a bit. And then we start to move towards more normal watering. This sod is Bolero Plus, and Bolero Plus is mostly tall fescue with a little bit of 
bluegrass mixed in. It's improved uh, tall fescue, so it's fairly fine textured, and tall fescue will root deeply, and it's really, for a cool season grass, it's relatively efficient, but it does require more water than a warm season grass, uh, which warm season grasses in our area are very appropriate because they can get by without as much water. There are some obvious uh, advantages to sod that I don't even need to explain. You get a beautiful, complete lawn with no bare spots or no weeds instantly. So that's the most obvious. Another one that maybe isn't as obvious is that you can pretty much plant it all times of the year, and that's not the case with seed. There's a lot of times where uh, the seed, either because it's too hot or too cold, seed won't germinate properly. Warm season grass only has a few months where it'll, it'll germinate, and cool season grass only has a few months where it'll germinate. So that's a big advantage. In fact, this is a good example. Being 106 and wanting some kind of improved fescue, we couldn't have seeded it. It wouldn't come up in temperatures like that but we can plant it uh, in sod on 106 day, and if we water it properly, um, it'll do fine. Obviously, a downside is it's quite a bit more expensive. The material is quite a bit more expensive than if you seed. If you're going to do this yourself, from a value standpoint, your best value is seeding it. For our cost to buy this sod and all the material, the John and Bob's uh, material that we needed with it, uh, is about $3,000. And if we did it with seed, we could buy that material for about $400. So uh, just in material costs, the sod is about seven and a half times as much. But then you have to wait. You have to realize if we tried to plant it at the same time, it probably wouldn't come up. So then you'd seed it again. You might have to spend another three or $400 plus there's a lot more involved to management of trying to germinate a lawn from seed and trying to make it weed free and trying to make it complete. It's not, usually it doesn't just jump up out of the ground at two weeks looking perfect, looking like sod. It takes some time. So sod advantages are immediately a healthy, strong lawn and uh, the timing, whereas a seeded lawn, we can only plant certain times of the year. The sod lawn we can plant any time of the year. Last week's plant was a difficult one. Very few of you got it, uh, but a few of you did. It was Ilex Emerald Colonnade. Uh, so the cultivar is Emerald Colonnade. The genus is Ilex, Ilex Emerald Colonnade. It's kind of a new introduction into the landscape industry in the last five or 10 years, and it's uh, really a really useful plant. This week's plant is a much more common one than last week and a very useful one. See if you can get it. I'll give you a slight hint. This a cultivar uh, in the genus has a white flower and most of the other uh, cultivars don't, but uh, this one has a white flower that'll help you out. Click the link in the comments in order to submit your answer. So if uh, this tall fescue lawn intrigues you, it is an interesting lawn tough and stays green all year round, check out our prior video uh, where we explored it extensively and you can learn more about uh, tall fescue and specifically about the Bolero Plus.